And now I'm going to tell you a couple of different ways that you can reinforce. This is just a starting point. After that, you would need to play some games. You would need to do some activities to make sure that your child really is remembering these letter sounds and their formation. But one of the things we do is we play a game called Knock Knock Who's There. After we've taught the children a few of the letter sounds, we play a game with them. We lay out the letters upside down, as you can see, and we play Knock Knock Who's There with a few children or even just one child. And we ask them to play like this. Knock Knock Who's There? And we ask them to flip it over. Can you trace and tell me what sound this is. So it's kind of the same action, but now they're playing a game and they can do it with their friends, so it's more exciting. Remember, every time they trace that letter, it's forming a muscular impression on their mind and helping them to remember it. Now, this is way more uh, effective than having the child write down the letter and over and over on a piece of paper. That's boring for them. It's not fun. It isn't concrete. Uh, it's just repetitive. This is more fun. And that texture helps, like I said, to form that imprint on their mind of the formation of this letter. Try it, you'll see. Another thing we can do is we can cut out pieces of card or pieces of paper. And in light pencil, we can write this. And then we ask the children to do a number of things. They can sprinkle glitter or sprinkle rice after putting glue. They can uh, do fingerprinting. We give them a non-toxic ink pad and on their own make their own sandpaper letter. All right. Uh, they can uh, do finger painting. Anything that allows them to use their sensory um, you know, experiences to repeat and to reinforce this letter uh, formation and sound. We can also get small, uh, you know, uh, magnetic boards. It's fun for children, you know, you, you, they're not very expensive. You just write and then you wipe it, you know. So we can get those, they come in a little size. We ask them, can you trace this? Now, do you think you can write it on the magnetic board? And they write it just that once. They would repeat this over and over enjoyably rather than writing on a paper. We can also let them write on the whiteboard. In a Montessori classroom, we always have a whiteboard that is for the children's use, not for the teachers. It's something that's low at the child's level. We keep colorful board markers and we ask the child, why don't you write this on the board after you've traced it? They always feel very grown up when they get to use that and special because it's always something that's reserved for teachers. So they feel excited. The other thing is that the board marker is a bit fatter than a pencil, so it's easier for their fingers to manipulate. And it's kind of slippery when they're writing on the board, so it's easier than writing on a piece of paper. Then we can transit them, transition them into writing on a piece of paper, but allow them to see writing as an enjoyable process, not something that's a chore, not something that they dread. Every time we take out a notebook, they look at us and they're upset. We don't want them to feel that, okay? So let's find enjoyable ways to help our children write, uh, to make them love the process of writing.